Isaac Rabin. Have you heard of him? This is the first time in Jewish history that a Jew killed the chosen leader of the Jewish nation. But it's not the first time in Jewish history. Excuse me? She said, this is what you did to Yeshua. Shalom. My name is Omri. I was born and raised in a secular kibbutz in Israel. The kibbutzim were based on pure communism. The motto behind the kibbutz was, everybody gives as much as they can and receives as much as they need. But I think I, that I was only three years old when I understood for the first time in my life that one day I will die. Why? It just made no sense to me at all. I would have preferred never to be born than to be born to live and then to die. What people in Israel do as they finish their military service before they start their real lives, that they just want to break free. So they go and travel around the world and just have some fun. I did likewise. To the outside, everything seems to be fine. But inside, there's one huge emptiness that no matter what you try to fill it out with, it still remains empty. I traveled to Thailand, Australia, New Zealand. I landed in Auckland, in the North Island. Somebody told me about this beautiful seaside resort town called Pahia in the Bay of Islands. All the hostels were in the same street there. It's called King's Road. I put my backpack on and I went to that hostel. I entered the office. There was a counter there with a bell. I rang the bell and behind the curtain came this woman. She was in her early mid 40s. She looked at me and she said, you're an Israeli. How did you know that? You're God's chosen people. You're very, very special people to God. And already I, th I started thinking to myself, uh oh, what did I get myself into? Three or four days after I moved into that hostel, this woman came to me saying, come Omri, talk to me. She said, I want to understand how you, the Jews, the Israelis, how you think. And she kept on saying all the time, you're God's chosen people. I said to her, Yitzhak Rabin, Isaac Rabin, have you heard of him? I said to her that Rabin was the head of the Israeli army in the most glorious war of modern day states of Israel. And almost 30 years later, I said to her, another Jew, in the name of God, decided to assassinate him for Rabin wanted to sign a peace treaty, giving back land for peace. So you tell me, I asked this woman, what's so chosen, what's so better about us, the Jews? And I added, this is the first time in Jewish history that the Jew killed the chosen leader of the Jewish nation. But it's not the first time in Jewish history. So I said to her, excuse me? She said, this is what you did to Yeshua. And I said to her, listen, lady. But she said, I'm not mixing anything. Yeshua was a chosen leader of the Jewish nation, but the Jewish people did not want to have him. And instinctively, I knew inside four things. I knew that just like myself, this Yeshua, as I knew him back then, was a Jew. I knew that just like myself, he was born and raised in Israel. Even though I knew nothing about what he taught, I've heard sometimes before, somewhere, somehow, that he gave the world the highest moral code and ethics. And I knew for a fact that he influenced the world more than any other human being ever walked the face of this earth. The open-minded and secular and pluralistic kibbutz where I've been brought up, they taught us about Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar and Napoleon and Hitler. All these men that truly influenced world events, but none of them was a Jew. None of them was born or raised in Israel. None of them has influenced the world as much as this guy. How come they tell us nothing about him in Israel? Are they trying to hide something from him? So I started asking this woman some questions. Now at some point I could see that everything this woman believed in was based on one thing and one thing only. Her firm belief that three days after he was crucified, after he died and after he was buried, that this Yeshua Minatzer, this Jesus of Nazareth, has been raised from the dead. Surely if there's God in heaven who spoke this world into being, then it wouldn't be too complicated for him to raise someone from the dead, if that's what you chose to do. Perhaps I could be raised from the dead too. Right away, it took me back to the time I was only three years old. Why was I born? Perhaps this could be the key to unlock this mystery I had since I was a very young boy. I remember opening the Brit Hadasha, the, the New Testament. What I had in mind was that the New Testament was was a Christian book. In fact, I thought it was the Christian manual for the persecution of the Jews, but what I read in the book of Matthew was the complete opposite. It is the reading of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that convinced me beyond any doubt that Yeshua, 
Jesus is a promised Jewish Messiah that was foretold by the Hebrew prophets. In the Hebrew scriptures, every page I turned in the Old Testament, I could see the Messiah. I knew Yeshua was the Messiah and I had a great desire to share it with every Israeli I would meet.